Hey guys, we're going to talk about trig word problems today. So let's get right into the problem. The problems we're going to do are the problems that have to do with alligators and the swamp that we started talking about in class. So in case you weren't here in class before, we're going to start with the very front page. Uh, if you don't have this piece of paper in front of you, you should get on the homework site and download it and print it out and like look at the problems a little bit ahead of time. Um, or if you uh, have got it in class, you should get it out and be sure you've worked through all the problems before looking at this video. Our first step in solving this problem is labeling the graph. So it says a naturalist measured the population of alligators in a swamp over time. The graph of their population is given below. Well, um, the first job is going to be to label the two axes with words that represent this problem. The bottom axis, the horizontal axis, is usually time. We haven't figured out the unit yet. And the vertical axis is usually the thing that depends on time. So in this case, it's number of alligators. Now they're going to start giving us some information about the graph, and we're going to fill it in on the graph and kind of figure out what's all going on here. Um, it says the scientists found the population peak seven months into the experiment. So the population peak is going to be right here at this point. So beneath this, I'm going to label seven. Seven is a good point to have, but now I need to fully scale out this axis. So to fully scale out this axis, I need to add another line. I need to add the midline of the graph. So the midline is the line that goes straight through the middle of the graph. And it's the line that's going to help me divide everything into four equal pieces. So now that I've drawn the midline, I kind of see that the graph is cut into one, two, three, four pieces. Those four pieces were kind of like the four quadrants of our Ferris wheel. One, two, three, four, if we're sort of connecting this back to a Ferris wheel. So back to the graph. I fully labeled my x-axis here based on the four landmark points. So seven is the first, 14 is the second, 21 is the third, and 28 is the last. This takes us through one full period of the graph, or one full cycle of the graph. So based on that, we know that the period is 28. The problem says the maximum population of alligators was 122, and the minimum was 50. Use this information to scale the other axis. So near the maximum, I'm going to write 122. And near the minimum, I'm going to write 50. Now I need to find the middle value. The fastest way to find the middle value is do the average of the max and minimum values. So that's 122 plus 50 divided by 2 because I'm doing the average. And when you do that on your calculator, you get 86, which means that this value here can be labeled 86. And I'm going to make a note over here that the midline is 86. To finish the graph, I also need to know the amplitude. So I need to know the distance from the bottom up to 50. That's like the amplitude. Usually, sometimes we measure it, draw a little segment right here to indicate the amplitude. Sometimes we draw a little segment right here to indicate the amplitude but it's the distance from this 86, either down to 50 or up to 122. Uh, it's easiest in this case to count up from 50. 50 up to 80 would be 30, up and six more would be 36, so the amplitude is 36. Our next job is to write an equation that matches this graph. So to write the equation, I know it's gotta look like the form y equals something sine something plus something. So I've got three sort of pieces to fill in. The piece that I'm going to fill in out here is the amplitude, so that's where I put 36. The piece that I'm going to fill in the back is the midline, so I'm going to put 86. And the piece that I'm going to fill in in the middle is uh, what we call the B value. So I know that B is 360 divided by the period. So I'll do 360 divided by uh, the period of 28. And when I do that, you can do it on your calculator, you get 12.85. Uh, I'm going to round that to 12.9. So this is going to be 12.9x. 
uh, because we have to do 360 divided by the period. This is the final equation that we're going to use to solve the rest of the problems in this set. The last question on the front said, what would negative four months represent in the context of this problem? Um, if we get a negative answer, the best way to think about a negative answer is time before uh, the measurement begins. So since all of this stuff is cyclical, there's always a cycle that happened before we started measuring. Sometimes when we get answers in our calculator, our answer is in that section. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that we have to sort of adapt it to fit somewhere else. First question on the back side says, for how long will the number of alligators be less than 70? So when it says how long, it's talking about a length of time. So we're going to have to figure out how to find the length of time that this is true. Um, less than 70. So in this case, I want to look at the line y equals 70. Uh, and I've already kind of got it on the graph here. By the way, this is just a computer graph of the function to make this video go a little nicer. You can do all of this with a hand done graph. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to draw my line y equals 70 right here on the function. I notice that the population is less than 70 sort of in this interval of time. I'm drawing it along this interval of time um, because I can see that this is the, these are all the times the graph is below the line at 70. So I need to find um, the time here and the time here. If I can find these two times or somehow figure out like the length of time um, between here and here, then I will have solved the problem. So I'm looking for the total length from this starting point to this starting point along the time axis, which is scale 14, 21, 28, all around here. The starting point for all of this is solving an equation. So the equation starts like this. Um, we know 70, so we need the alligators to be 70. And we write the equation, uh, which we have on the other side. OK, I've got my calculator out. I'm going to start with the 70. I want to get the x part alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is take 70 and subtract uh, 86, which gives me negative 16. Uh, then I'm going to divide by 36 and get negative 0.4 repeating. So at this point, I'm going to stop and write down what I've got. So neg negative 0.4 repeating is going to equal sine of 12.9x. At this point, I need to use sine inverse. So in my calculator, I'm going to have to type sine inverse of negative 0.4 repeating, and that will equal 12.9x. So in the calculator, the best way to do this is get your sine inverse up, and then just go up and get this value and bring it down. Uh, I'm getting a weird answer because I'm probably in radians. So at this point, check that your calculator is in degrees, uh, especially if you haven't used it in a while, you're borrowing it from someone else. Um, I'm in degrees now, so I'm going to go back and try this again. Much better. That's a much more reasonable answer. So I know negative 26.38. is equal to 12.9x. And my last step then is just to divide by 12.9. I get our x value is negative 2.045. So I'm going to round that to negative 2.05 equals x. Now I look at this x value, and I'm a little bit confused because I was looking for a length of time, and I've correctly solved the equation, but I have a length of time that's negative. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. 
I want to look at the graph now. So I'm remembering what my answer was, negative 2.05. I'm going to go back to the graph. I see that at around uh, sometime right before the experiment began, right here, the graph was also at this value of 70. And what the calculator is saying is that the time, the, the length of time between this point and zero is 2.05 months. Why didn't I put the negative here? Well, in this case, I'm counting forwards. Your calculator is counting from zero backwards, so that's why they give you a negative. I am more interested at this point in the size of this change than I am in the direction. The direction tells me where it is, left or right. The 2.05 tells me how big it is. So I want to use this with some symmetry. I see that from the line 70 up to zero, it takes 2.05 months. Well, that's true over here in the negative zone. Whoa, what's going on? That's true over here in the negative zone. It's also going to be true over here in the positive zone. So from this point over to here is going to be 2.05 months. But also, because of the symmetry of the graph, I know that this from this zero over to here is going to also take 2.05 months. I'm looking for the length of time that's sort of in this green segment here. It turns out I don't actually have to find the time that we're starting here or the time that we're ending. I'm just looking for the total time. So all I really have to do is take 14 which is the length of time from here to here. And I have to take away 2.05 for the left side, and I have to take away 2.05 for the right side. And that tells me that the length of time in between here is going to be 9.9 .9 months. Um, and depending on how you rounded, your final answer should have been close to 9.9 .9 for number one. The next question asked, how many alligators will there be after 21 months? Um, some people in class were taking issue with the word after. When you see the word after in a math problem, usually, maybe not always, but usually, you want to think about this as after exactly 21 months have passed, period. So all they're really saying is look on your months axis, which is down here, find 21, and tell me how many alligators there are. So in this case, the answer is 50 alligators. The next question wanted to know, what is the first time the population of alligators will be exactly 99? Well, the population of alligators will be 99 at a bunch of times. 99 is a little less than 100, so I'm going to draw the line just a little bit below 100. I see just on this graph right here, I see at least one, two, and three times that the population will be exactly 99. However, it's asking for the first time. So I only need to find this time. To find the intersection point, I write an equation. I set the number of alligators I'm looking for, 99, equal to the equation of the curve. Um, again, I'm going to solve using my calculator. So I have to start with 99, and first step is subtract 86. Then uh, that'll move the 86 over. Then I have to divide by 36. 
and I get 0 0.361 repeating. So I'll write that down. Um, feel free, by the way, to write down more steps in the middle here, especially if you're uh, not quite sure what you're doing. Uh, it always helps me follow you. Uh, if you're writing down all the steps, I can really pinpoint uh, if you're making understanding errors or if you're just making little errors. Um, but I like, I'm trying to make this video not be super long, so that's why I'm not writing down literally everything. Next step, I have to do the sine inverse. So I'm going to do sine inverse of that value. And again, I copy the whole value and I get 21. So um, 21.17, let's say, equals 12.9x. Um, I would like you to show the sine inverse step, so I'll write it down. Sine inverse of 0 0.361 repeating equals 12.9x. Uh, showing this step is telling me exactly what you did on the calculator. This is telling me that you evaluated it correctly. Last step, I have to divide by 12.9. Um, I'm just keeping the exact value of this 21.16. Uh, I get 1.640, um, or really 1.641. So 1.641 equals x. Hmm. Well, that's not a negative value. Let's go back to the graph and see what I can find about 1.641. Mm, it looks like it's about this far. So in this case, our calculator told us the answer closest to zero because that's what the calculator is programmed to do. Um, but the calculator gave us the answer we wanted because we were already looking for the first time that that happened. So in this case, the first time the population of alligators will be exactly 1.99 is 1.64 months after uh, beginning the measurements. The next question asks when the population of alligators is at its average, how many alligators will there be? Well, when we talk about the average of a graph, and when we've, we'd already worked with something with an average, the average was represented by the midline. And one way to think about this is that there is the same amount of graph above as there is graph below. So amount above is going to equal the amount below. Which means that when the population of alligators is at its exact average, the population of alligators is at the midline, which is 86. So that's our solution to this question about the average, 86. Next question. This is about Samir. Samir won't go swimming if there are more than 60 alligators in the swamp. Um, what is the earliest time of year that he can go swimming? So. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, just like before, is draw a line that represents 60 alligators being in the swamp. So my line is going to follow this line at 60 right here. Um, I'm going to observe that the experiment kind of starts at this point. So I can see right away where the earliest time is. It's right here. I can also see that the earliest time is actually uh, at maybe 16 months, somewhere between 14 and 21 months. So the whole first year of his experiment, he won't be able to go swimming. He will be able to go swimming uh, at this point, even though that's not really like a time of year. That's sort of a weird uh, wording of this question, maybe. Um, we're just going to get the exact number for this time. So let's solve an equation. Uh, just like before, we need to set our alligator equation equal to 60. So 60 is going to equal uh, 36 sine 12.9x plus uh, 86. I got my calculator out uh, to solve this equation again. So first step is I'm going to take 60, the number of alligators I want, and subtract 86. 
I get negative 26. So that's the amount of alligators between uh, the line 60 and this midline. And then I'm going to divide by 36. And I get negative 0.72222. Uh, I'll pause and write that down. So negative uh, 7.2 repeating equals sine 12.9x. To solve this, I use inverse sine. So I write down sine inverse of negative 7.2 equals 12.9x, and then I go back to the calculator and figure out that value. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Negative 46.238, so I'll write that down. And then, finishing step, I divide by 12.9. Uh, negative 3.58. So I'll round this to negative 3.6. Hmm. So negative 3.6 is a correct solution to the equation, but it doesn't really seem like it matches with our idea that the earliest time of year is uh, somewhere between 14 and 21. How can we fix this? So what does negative 3.6 mean? It means that uh, from this point to this point, when you count backwards, that's negative 3.6 uh, months. Well, we don't actually care that they're counting backwards. We care about the size of this time, the amount of time. So the total amount of time is 3.6 months. Well, that's sort of on the uh, right side of a dip. Samir is interested in this point on the left side of a dip. Well, the symmetry is going to work the same way. So from the midline here at zero over to that first point that he can go swimming is a time period of 3.6 months. But the starting value here is 14. So to find the actual earliest time, I need to do um, 14 plus 3.6 to give me 17.6 uh, months after uh, the experiment began. And that will be the first time that it is safe for Samir to go swimming in the swamp. Our last two questions of the day are about Sarah the Brave Stunt Woman, who wants to film a reality show when there are the most alligators. She needs three months to film her show. So let's think about this for a second. Um, we want to figure out when there will be the absolute most alligators in the swamp. That's going to be somewhere around the peak of the swamp. Right? There's not the most alligators. Oh, come back here. There's not the most alligators down here. The most alligators are up here. She needs three months. If she starts filming before the peak, sort of, sort of like this, there's going to be a lot of alligators. And at the very end of her show, there will be the absolute most alligators. She could also start filming right here and take three months where uh, the alligators are the most at the start of her show and then they sort of decrease. But she is very smart. And Sarah thinks, well, wouldn't I get the most alligators if I film at the very top, so that in the exact middle of my show, uh, the peak will happen. So middle of three months needs to be the peak population. Well, the middle of three months happens right at seven. So if I'm splitting up my three months in that way, 
To make a total of 3, I need to have 1.5 months on this side going up to the peak, and then I need to have 1.5 months on that side going down uh, back to complete the 3. So to find the starting time, I need to do 7 minus 1.5, and to find the ending time, I need to do 7 plus 1.5. So this is going to be 5.5 uh, months, and this is going to be 8.5 months. And we can check that the distance between 5.5 and 8.5 is a total distance of 3, so she'll be able to film her show. So um, when should Sarah start filming? Uh, after 5.5 months. What will the population of alligators be when she starts? All you have to do is plug in 5.5 into the total equation. We'll just use the calculator to do it. 36 sine of 12.9 times 5.5 uh, plus the midline of 86 gives you a population of 120.02. Uh, we'll just round to the nearest alligator. Uh, population of 120 alligators. And that's it. We've done a bunch of problems. We, we uh, use the same graph for every single one, and every single problem has sort of a different twist. Some of them were looking for lengths of time, some of them were looking for specific points in time. Some of them were looking for numbers of alligators. So uh, the very most important thing when you're doing a trig word problem is to not get stuck in a single method. It's to really like read the question, understand the scale on your axes, and um, when you solve an equation and you get an answer, don't immediately circle it and assume it's the right thing. Make sure that you're interpreting that number in terms of the story and in terms of the graph so that you're actually answering the question correctly. And then think about, as you're working with the graph, the symmetry of the graph, the repetition of the graph, uh, and all of those properties of the sine function that we know and love. And if you can do all of that, you will be fine and you will not get eaten by alligators. I hope you guys have a good night. I will see you next time.